question. Does the president have his priorities straight? This week, President Obama used a commencement speech at the University of California, Irvine, to push his global warming agenda. Canada approves a pipeline to China. The terrorists in Iraq have taken control of that country's largest refinery, and on and on and on it goes. Remember, the last, latest Wall Street Journal poll, only 37% approve of the president's handling of foreign policy. It's all over the place. A new all-time low, that 37%. Now listen to what House Speaker John Boehner said about the president. Here we are, a year and a half later. You look at this presidency, and you can't help but get the sense that the wheels are coming off. Well, that's pretty strong stuff from the speaker there. Joining us now is Lucy Caldwell, senior political advisor with the Goldwater Institute. All right, Lucy, welcome to the program. Uh, the president held a meeting yesterday in the White House amongst economists. He invited a whole bunch of economists. Come on in. Want to hear from you. Paul Krugman was one of those economists. <laughs> what do you think the president heard from Mr. Krugman and his fellow economists? I think he probably heard that he should stay the course on the global warming campaign. But that's not the only thing that Obama did this week. He also rode a giraffe robot and talked about how that was the future of jobs in America. Did we uh, have video of him riding a giraffe? <laughs> I don't think we did. I haven't seen it, but I, I would it. love to see it. <laughs> well, what, what, okay, what are you saying? The president has all of these problems that the country faces, and he's doing not anything about them. Is that what you're saying here? No priorities? I think so. I think it's sideshow politics. I mean, fundamentally, we have some very real problems, huge unemployment rate, and the president just you know, runs to one fire and then goes and sets another one off. He thinks that just by doing speechifying and bravado, he's going to get us out of this looming crisis. But does he care? Do you think he fundamentally cares about addressing these problems, or is he just going out there and being himself and refusing to change course? I think he cares, but he doesn't care in a way that is going to change the course of this country. He fundamentally thinks that the way to, say, solve our jobs crisis in this country is to either make private enterprise dependent on government or go and run and just create more government jobs or create a new welfare program. He's not interested in creating an economy where we have standalone, independent, free enterprise. Well, you're the, you're the Goldwater Institute, aren't you? Yeah. You're libertarians, aren't you? You you're you're all private enterprise. No government, all private enterprise. Well, let's not get carried away. So you're bound, <laughs> you're bound to be critics of this president. <laughs> you're bound to be. But my question is, why doesn't he change course? If what he's doing is not working, why don't you just tweak a little bit and change course just a little bit? Why not? I don't know. It seems like he's spiraling off course. He has this... He, he just seems to be in this mode where he, you know, has one scandal and so he solves it by showing us another that turns out to be far worse. The IRS emails, the Bergdahl stuff, you name it. It's, it's out of control, and it doesn't fundamentally address the jobs issue in this country. I think this is classic politics we're talking about there, though. It's the arrogance of this president that seems to me to be the real story here. He's going out and he's campaigning. He's laid out his agenda. He's a second-term president. There's no way, especially as we get closer to the midterms especially, that he's going to come out and admit that he has made mistakes. Why then, would you do that? Then he doesn't care about his party. He's taking his party into these midterm elections with a series of problems that he's not addressing, and he's leaving his party to face the music before the voters. And, and fundamentally, at this point, this isn't like when he first got in and it was like, hey, well, if I haven't solved this by year three, year four, it got longer and longer. At this point, hey, it's on you, Barack. I mean, he's been in office since the beginning of 2009. So at this point, the problems that we're seeing, he wants to gloss over them because the buck absolutely stops But he's not going to get anything done. If he, if he loses the Senate in this election, and he might lose it. Seems like it. Goodbye. There's, he can't do a thing for the next two years. He can't. It's true, but what, what's worrisome is that even you, you mentioned that Wall Street Journal poll this week. What's scary about it is although the approval ratings are at an all-time low, there's still an increasing support for various forms of his regulation that make it seem like even the American people are getting out of touch with how to get our economy moving again. Okay. We appreciate you being with us, Lucy. Come again soon, okay? Thanks.